So let's apply the rational zero theorem to find the real zeros of this following polynomial function of 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 9. So first of all, what in the world is the rational zero theorem? Well, it basically says this, that if you take the factors of your constant term, call them p, and you take the factors of your leading coefficient, which is the coefficient in front of the highest power of x, call them q, then you take those factors p, divide them by q, and this will give you the list of possible real zeros. Doesn't mean that they will be, and it doesn't mean that this is an all-inclusive list. There can be other zeros, all right? But, you know, this will give us maybe an idea of what might be possible. So the first thing is, what are the factors then of 9? And you could think about it as negative 9 as well, but just, just think about it as just 9. What's the factors of 9? No, the whole numbers that multiply to 9. Well, I can only really think of 4, right? It's going to be 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. Okay, 3 and 3. Now, since you don't have to repeat these 3s, because 3 is the same as 3, so it's really just, I, I said 4, but I guess I was wrong. It's really 3. Uh, each one of these come with a plus and a minus value associated with them. Okay, those are going to be the factors of 9. Now, what are the factors of 2? Well, it's just 1 and 2, and they're both positives and negatives as well. Okay, so you got three factors on the top, two factors on the bottom. And what that means now is that when we look at the possibilities, the possible uh, numerator value divided by denominator value, we're going to have six possibilities, right? We would have plus minus one divided by plus minus one. So that's going to be simply plus or minus one. Then you'd also have plus or minus three divided by plus or minus one. And you'll see where I'm going with this in about two seconds. That's also going to be plus or minus three, okay? So we have plus or minus one as a value, plus or minus three as a value. Then you'd have also plus or minus nine as a value, right? Without even doing the math there. And then you would take each of these factors and divide it by two, okay? So you'd also have plus minus one divided by plus minus two, which would give you then plus minus one half. And then you'd have the other two as well. You'd have plus minus three over two, and you'd have plus minus uh, nine over two. So here's the list of possible real zeros, all right? Now, how do we then go about, so we got six of them, right? I mean, what, so which one works? So basically now what you would do, and actually you don't, you actually have more than six, right? I mean, you have six values here, but they're each positive and negative, which means that you really have 12. So now what you'd have to do is without doing anything with the calculator, you know, kind of really applying this, you would have to take one of those 12, plug it in for X. And that value that you plug in, let's do one as an example. Okay, so two, you'd I'm gonna plug in positive one. So you cube it, and then you do minus five times one, and then you do, well, that's squared, right? And then it's nine times one minus nine. If this does equal zero, then the value you plugged in here for x is a zero of the function. What that means is that, remember, to find the zeros, what they're really saying is what value of x gives the function value of zero, okay? So does this work out? Well, let's do the math. This works out to be two minus five plus nine minus nine. This is not looking very, you know, good as far as it equaling zero. So what I know then is I know positive one is not a zero of the function. Well, that's just dandy, right? So now guess what? We got 11 left. So what are we gonna, so this is gonna get a little ridiculous, all right, if you gotta kinda do a guess and check. So what you really wanna do at this particular point in order to kinda use this theorem, you need to kinda have an idea of what, what the zeros will be. And I'm gonna use the aid of the calculator here, all right? So go to y equals and plot this thing, 2x cubed, so you're gonna do 2x cubed minus 5x squared, then plus 9x minus 9, and graph it. So here it is, okay? Now notice that this thing only crosses, it appears, right at the moment, maybe we'll zoom out a little bit, we'll go to zoom 3, and I think this is probably only going to cross one time, right? So let's go back to zooming on in. Let's go to two. 
Okay, so we zoom on in. And each one of these tick marks here represents a value of one. So if we kind of have a little bit of an aid here, it looks like it's possibly one and a half, possibly, okay? Right, this looks like one and a half. Now, do we have a value over here that's one and a half? Sure we do, positive one and a half that is, and that's the same thing as three over two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check that now, all right? So you're gonna do two times three over two squared, uh, cubed, excuse me, minus then five times three over two squared, plus then nine times three over two, minus nine, and that should equal zero. So just go to your calculator now, plug it on in. So two parentheses, now just do three divided by two, close the parentheses, and then cube it, just like that. Then do minus five, open parentheses. Anytime you plug in a number, please use parentheses. It'll help significantly, because sometimes there's calculation mistakes. So nine, open parentheses, then three over two. Hopefully, as I'm talking, I'm not screwing this up. Minus nine. Oh, look, that equaled zero. Dandy. So that is now one of the real zeros. Okay, that's the benefit of using the rational zero theorem. Not only did we find a real zero, but we also found a rational zero. Okay, so I know that x, when x is equal to three over two, as we saw with the graph, and as we kind of showed here algebraically, um, using arithmetic, uh, the one of the zeros here is going to be three over two. All right, then what you're gonna say is, all right, well, there should be, so I'll erase this list, as you can see, we would have had to, I mean, by the time we would have guessed positive three over two, we would have, right, 30 minutes would have been up if you got to do this on the test and you'll answer five questions out of the 20 and you'll, you know, wind up with the uh, consequent grade. So now what I would do from here, if you had to find all the zeros, right, it says to find the real zeros, right, um, you know, you looking at the graph that we had over here before, there's a pot, there's a three, there's three maximum zeros for this function because that's the highest power of x. Now the real zeros are going to be when the graph crosses that x-axis, but it only crossed the x-axis at one point. What that means is that there's one real zero. But wait, there should, there could be three, so where's the other two? They're imaginary. They're imaginary. They're going to be imaginary zeros. And what you can do to prove it to yourself is you can now use, let's say, this zero and divide, do synthetic division now on this polynomial to find the quotient. All right, the quotient will be, by the way, it's going to be a quadratic, right? Because if you're starting with a cubic and you divide it then by the factor of this zero, which remember the factor would be x minus 3 over 2, okay? Because when you set this thing equal to zero, that would give you a positive three over two. So when you were to do the synthetic division here and you got your quadratic, the roots of that quadratic, or the zeros of the quadratic, should be imaginary. Watch, let's take a look. Bam. So the numbers I'm going to put in here, remember, are the coefficients of my terms. So the coefficient of the x cubed goes there, coefficient of the x squared goes there, coefficient of the x, and the constant term. All right, so the coefficient of the x cubed is just 2 minus 5, 9 and negative 9. Cool. Then the value now that goes on the outside here is found when you take this factor, you set it equal to 0 and solve it for x, right? But we already have it. So basically, what I'm saying is that we plug in a, a 0 value, okay? 3 over 2. And then you just follow the steps, right? Bring down the 2, then take 2, multiply it by 3 over 2. That'll be a total of 3, right? Because it's 3 over 2 times 2. Can really put that over one, the twos go bye bye, and that's just three, okay? So now we're gonna speed through the rest of the uh, math here. So then what you do is you add this column on up, so that's gonna work out to be a negative two. Then you're gonna do that uh, multiplication, right? Negative two multiplied by a three over two, so that's gonna be a negative now three. Add this together, that gives you a total of six. Six times then three over two, right? That's gonna be positive nine. Add this together and that's a zero. And that's what we should expect. We should expect a remainder of zero because we actually kind of used before when I plugged in the zero value here uh, into the function, the you know remainder theorem says that uh, whatever that thing is equal to uh, will be the remainder uh, after you plug it in. So, and that's what we find here, right? This is That's what this column represents at the bottom. 
then this represents the constant term of your quotient. This will represent the coefficient of the x. This is the coefficient of the x squared term. This is all review at this point, right? If you need help with synthetic division, I got a whole playlist like 30, 40, 50. I don't even remember how many videos, but I go painstakingly slow through the process. So here, obviously, that's not really the point. Uh, so that's why I'm going through it quickly. Uh, but check out the channel and, you know, check out the playlist. And by the way, we got tons of other videos on our channel, thousands actually. So not only in math, but physics and chemistry as well. Solve specific problems, all right? So it might be very valuable to you. Now, let's write out the quadratic. So the resulting quotient here is going to be 2x squared uh, minus 2x plus 6. All right, this is the quotient. So when you do this division here, it doesn't equal 0 anymore, all right? It equals this thing. Um, and what I'm going to do now is since I have a quadratic, right, we have method we have methods we can follow to find now the zeros. Namely, we can use the quadratic formula, right? X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, right? You just have to label your A, B, and C values. So your A value is the coefficient of the X squared term, which is a 2. Your B value is the coefficient of the X term, which is a negative 2. And the C value is the constant term, which is a positive 6. You take these bad boys, plug them in, and you evaluate, right? Now, or... You can use your calculator. So if we use our calculator, and you want this program, by the way, it takes about three or four minutes to have a video on it, you should check the link in the description below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my quad program, and I'm going to now plug in my A value of 2, my B value of negative 2, and my C value of 6. And I'm going to hit graph. Boom. Oh, no. No, not graph. I'm going to hit enter. What? Don't even know how to use my own program. Anyway, um, notice these are the answers. Okay, do you see that little I there? You know what that stands for? Imaginary. Not really, but it does. It actually represents radical negative one. Okay, which, can you take the square root of a negative value? No, you can't. You know, real. You can't take a real. It could be imaginary though. Anyway, um, as you can see, I just kind of proved uh, that the roots here of this quadratic that resulted from this division are imaginary. And that's what we anticipated because the graph only crosses the x-axis in one place. When the graph crosses the x-axis, those are known as real zeros. Since this had a maximum of three, but it only had one real zero, that means the remaining two should have been imaginary. And that's how you go about it, ladies and gentlemen. Even though that's not the question here, or that's not the, uh, we had to find the real zeros. You know, knowing more is probably better than knowing less. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. And if this helped you out at all, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, maybe even telling your classmates, that's really the best way to help us out. All right. Help us spread the word. And uh, thank you so very much for all your support. We really appreciate it. And check out our channel because we have thousands of videos out there to help you through your class. Take care.